All right, so let's say we have y plus seven is equal to 12. Okay, so how do we solve this guy? The goal is we wanna get y by himself. We have this seven next to him, plus seven, and that is a problem, so we wanna get rid of this guy. The way we do it is by doing the opposite. We're going to subtract seven from the left, and because it, we do it to the left, we must also do it to the right. If we didn't do it to the right, and we only did it to the left, then we've screwed up and we haven't done anything valid. But as long as we subtract seven here, we can subtract seven over here. And by the way, why are we subtracting seven? Because seven minus seven is zero. So we basically are trying to get y all by himself. So on the left, all we have is y, and on the right, we have 12 minus seven, which is five. And that is the final answer. So y is equal to five. Now, if you're curious if this is correct, you can always check it in algebra. You can take the five, stick it in here, because y is equal to five. Five plus seven is equal to 12, so it checks out. Everything's correct. All right, what if we have something a little bigger? Negative 37 plus z is equal to 37. How do we solve for z? We're trying to find out what this is equal to. Now we have this 37, uh, this negative 37 sitting over here. We don't like that. The only way we can really get rid of it is to do the opposite. This is negative, so we have to do the opposite of subtraction. We have to do addition. So negative 37, we add 37 to the left. And if we add it to the left, we have to add it to the right as well. In other words, all we did was add 37 here to the left-hand side, and, and then of course we had to do the same thing to the right-hand side. The reason we're adding it is because negative 37 plus 37 is zero. And that basically eliminates everything on the left-hand side. The only thing we have left is z. On the right-hand side, we have 37 plus 37, which is 74. The answer is 74. And again, you can check it by putting 74 in for z. Negative 37 plus positive 74 is gonna give you positive 37 for a final answer, and I encourage you to check that just to make sure. In fact, honestly, that, that is really one of the coolest things about algebra, is that once you get an answer, you can always check it, and you always know if you're right. So if you get wrong answers in algebra, there's no reason, because you can always check your answers to make sure you're getting it right. All right, so let's crank up the complexity just a little bit. What if we have 4 thirds is equal to negative 2 thirds plus x? Notice there's a couple differences here. The first one is, I have fractions in here, which scares off a lot of people. The second one is, x is on the right-hand side. It doesn't matter where x is. All you're trying to do is get x on one side of the equal sign. Doesn't matter where it is, you just wanna get it by itself. So you wanna do this uh, using the rules that we're learning here. So since this negative 2 thirds is negative here, we wanna do the opposite. We wanna add 2 thirds to both sides. Because if we add 2 thirds over here, it's going to go away with negative 2 thirds. It gives us 0. It's going to disappear. And whatever we do on one side, we have to do on the other. And by the way, let me say, this is a great example of why some students have problems in algebra. Because they come into algebra, they kind of understand the basic idea, and then they get to a problem like this and they freeze up. Because they don't understand fractions. Math is so important that you build your skills one skill at a time. If you come in here and you don't understand any fractions, you don't know how to add two fractions, then you can't do this equation. And then if you can't do this equation, there's gonna be other things later that you won't be able to do because you can't do this. And then you kinda of just, it all falls apart. So it's why I take time to review fractions and I take time to review adding and subtracting negative numbers. And I take time to review a bunch of stuff because if you don't get it, you just cannot progress. So if this looks scary to you, if these fractions scare you a little bit, then stop, go back to the section on fractions and work those problems with fractions until you're absolutely comfortable with how to add and subtract fractions and multiply and divide fractions. Because it's not gonna get, you're not gonna, that's not gonna go away in algebra. You're always gonna have to deal with that. So even though this problem looks more complicated, it's not. You're applying the same thing. What you wanna do is you wanna add two thirds to both sides. So you have four thirds on the left you need to add two thirds. On the right, you have negative two thirds, and we're adding two thirds to that. Of course, we have our plus x. The only difference between this and this is I've added two thirds to both sides. And the reason I've added two thirds to both sides is because negative two thirds plus positive two thirds is zero. I'm trying to get x by itself. 
Okay, I'm trying to get x by itself. So what I have here on the left hand side, I've got two fractions that I need to add together. Fortunately, the common denominator is already here. I've already got a three. So I keep the common denominator, I add the numerators. I get six thirds on the left. And that's all from fraction arithmetic. On the right hand side, this goes away and I have x. Now let me ask you this, six thirds is really six divided by three, so what is that? So that's two. So two is equal to x. So it doesn't matter that it's two is equal to x, it's exactly the same thing as x is equal to two. You've learned that it doesn't matter if x is on the left or the right hand side, you still just try to get it by itself and then you have the answer. So x is equal to two, that is the answer to this problem.